Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Thursday of Dreamforce. How's everybody doing? Can you still hear me, or are you deaf from yesterday? I'm a little deaf. So today, we're going to talk about sandbox and scratch orgs, picking the right environment for you. My name is Raj Advani. I'm one of the directors in product management. I've been with Salesforce for 13 years, and in that, that whole time, I've been helping customers like you getting the most out of the platform. I've also got a co-speaker with me, and I'll let him introduce himself. Thanks, Raj. My name is Rohit Mehta, and I'm a product manager on the platform team as well. And I'm super excited here to talk about the different environments we provide at Salesforce. Before we get started, just a quick reminder of our forward-looking statements. Having two PMs on stage means we generally talk about a lot of forward-looking stuff. And you should not be making purchasing decisions based on any of those things besides all the things that are generally available today. So Salesforce provides a few different environments. And you may be familiar with some of them. And all these different environments, um, they can, they're used for different purposes. By the end of the session, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what these environments are and when to use which. But before we get started, uh, we need to understand the two types of feature development that exist within Salesforce. The first one is org development. Org development is when you're trying to build code and metadata for a specific production org. This is where you're trying to build changes and move specific metadata files between orgs as you're de deploying something that you've built in your developer environment. The second model is package development. Now, while this model is suited for building changes for multiple production orgs, it has several advantages, and you can use it even for a single production org. Now, over the years, ISVs have used this package model while they've distributed apps on the App Exchange. But like I said again, it has clear advantages, and we've built a bunch of new enhancements, um, specifically in the area of unlocked packages that let customers now build packages and install it into their production org. So let's understand a little bit more about what packaging is. Packaging is a container for distributing metadata into an org. It provides modularity to your app model. So if you go into your production org and you start looking at metadata, you will now be able to see with packages which, uh, which, what, what was the source of the package. How was that package introduced into that org in the first place? There's also a clear uh, upgrade process. There are versions associated with projects, uh, with packages. So now you can understand what were the different versions that came and, and what, what were you trying to introduce as part of each version. And so there's a very clear upgrade path. Now, package development is driven from source. Last year, we announced this new environment called Scratch Orgs. Scratch orgs are empty, ephemeral, and highly customizable environments that you can use for controlling the, the environment that you want to develop your package source in. As you can imagine, when you're building packages, you want this clean, isolated environment where you can define the dependencies that you want to associate with your package. That is exactly what Scratch orgs are used for. As you build these packages, and as you're ready to test them out, you will start creating package beta package versions and start deploying these in your developer pro sandboxes where the rest of your metadata of your production org lives. This is where you can start doing some integration testing. You can introduce sample data sets and understand how your, uh, how your package works. As you move on to staging this app and testing with more real world data sets, you can start looking at partial sandboxes. This is where we do the data management for you. We bring over up to five gigabytes of data from your production org. Then finally, while you're doing UAT and, before and as you're doing final testing, you can also use full sandboxes. This copies over all the data from your production org. And so you can now run, um, you can start seeing how your page load times are in this, in this larger data set. Now, what's important here is that we have these, uh, when you interact with these scratch orgs, we have the new Salesforce CLI with its own commands, source, pull, and push, which lets you interact and build these changes with scratch orgs. As you start looking at release management, you start, you start leveraging some of the metadata API commands. Or 
in, which, are under, in, which are packaged under the package installation command. So you start creating packages, and you start installing those packages within each of these environments. For org development, the vehicle for moving changes are chain sets. Chain sets help you move specific metadata between orgs. So again, there's, no, there's not a notion of a package, but you're, you're trying to move specific metadata files between orgs. There are several ways to do that. There are declarative ways, such as the chain sets UI, but there are also programmatic ways, such as the Ant migration tool and the metadata API itself. Now, for org development, you start off by creating a metadata copy of your production org. This is typically a developer sandbox. This is where you're building your changes. And as you're ready with these changes, you're starting to move these changes into, again, larger, data sand larger sandboxes where you can have more sample data or you can have production data. So start thinking about developer pro sandboxes. The motion of changes is through this chain declarative chain sets UI. Finally, just like packaging, with testing and UAT and staging, you, ha you start looking at partial and full sandboxes. Now, we also introduced some updates this year. Uh, they're actually beta in Winter 19 uh, to VS Code extensions. These extension updates now let you interact with other orgs besides Scratch orgs so that you can pull and push uh, data, metadata within a sandbox. And that's done via these new commands, source deploy and source retrieve, which are part of the new Salesforce CLI updates. Again, once those changes are done, when you're up to the release management step, you start using the MD API commands, MD API uh, deploy or retrieve, so that you're working against each of these sandboxes in your production org. Wait a second, wait a second. You're, you're blowing my mind a little bit more than Metallica did yesterday. Are you telling me now that I can use the CLI and source control with my sandboxes? Because up until now, I was told that's just for scratch orgs. Absolutely. So if you're looking to version changes, and if you're looking to work with sandboxes, you can absolutely use the new commands, source deploy, source retrieve. And we've always had the metadata commands in our CLI. So you could always have, uh, you could have automated the deployment process across all of your sandboxes and production org. That's great. So this is sort of like a cheat sheet that I use very often to tell customers which environment to use in which of the different use cases. Like I mentioned earlier, Package development happens in Scratch orgs. While developing changes for orgs, you're looking at developer sandboxes. This is also where you do some sort of testing, unit testing, um, and, and do a little bit of QA. Then as you move on to a larger testing scenario or integration testing, that's when you start looking at larger sandboxes. And then finally, when it comes to staging, UAT, training, that's when you start you're looking at partial and full sandboxes. So partial and full, regardless of the development model, are used in, in a similar sense. I, lo I love this slide because it really takes the guesswork out of what environment you should be using with what stage of development. It kind of just makes it much easier for you so you don't have to really think about it. Yep. And I would be remiss if I spoke about all of these developer, all of these environment types and didn't mention about the latest announcement that we had at the Platform Keynote this year. So to talk about that, let me call upon Raj. Great, thank you. So as Rohit mentioned, we did announce a new sandbox type at the Platform Keynote, and I wanted to talk about it for a few minutes here. What we announced was the Lightning Developer Pro Sandbox. It's an enhanced version of our Developer Pro Sandbox. And what this sandbox is going to give you is going to make your developers more productive and your admins more productive. You're going to be able to do faster app development, and you're going to have better quality software. At this point, I'm sure everyone's saying, yeah, you told me what it's going to do. How is it going to do all this? And the reason it's going to do all this is these two main features that are only included in the Lightning Developer Pro Sandbox for now. One is quick cloning. We're going to give you the ability to clone your Lightning Developer Pro Sandbox in the matter of minutes, regardless of size and shape. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. In the matter of minutes, regardless of size and shape, you'll be able to clone that environment. The next big feature is sandbox snapshots. And what we're going to give you there is the ability to take your sa sandbox, set it up how you need to, and then take a snapshot of it 
And then every subsequent sandbox you create, you can apply that snapshot. The beauty of the sandbox snapshots is it doesn't take a sandbox license when you create that snapshot. It's not taking one of your licenses like the clone does. So you can get your sandbox, take a snapshot, make that your goal standard, and then move on with your day. You mess up your sandbox, you need to come back, then just create a new one and use that snapshot. So we're not taking a license away on snapshots. We're also giving the ability to clone, which in turn is going to make it much easier to, for CI and CD. You're going to be able to set up your environments faster. It's going to make your developers more productive. It's going to make your admins more productive. And it's going to make you develop apps faster. So we've talked a lot in like the last just 10 minutes of a lot of the new innovations. And we've only scratched the surface. I'm going to give it back to Rohit for a minute to go over the roadmap of what's what we just released, what's coming up, and give you a glimpse into the future to see all the other great innovations that are coming with our Salesforce environments. Is that slide feature packed or not? Um, all right, so Winter 19 has been an exciting release for environments. The big announcement was that we made Scratchworks more available than the past. And we did that by allowing the developer hub to be enabled in DE orgs. This means that now you can start understanding how are Scratchworks meant to be used? What are the new packaging technologies? You can start doing trailhead modules within Scratchworks. Again, for production use cases, we still ask you to use your production dev hubs. The production dev hubs have larger Scratchwork limits, and that's where you run your CI and CD. There are more Scratchorg ca configuration capabilities. This means you can craft Scratchworks in, in more ways than in past releases. There's also a remamped org shape pilot. Uh, now, for those of you who have heard about this news at the Dreamforce last year, uh, we have now built a new and approved way of generating your Scratch definition file from your production org. That's what the shape feature is meant to be. Scratch orgs are empty orgs. And by providing this feature, we're taking away the guesswork of understanding what features were enabled in your production org. You can now get the same features and the same licenses from your production org and use that to spin up a, scr a scratch org. The other announcement, not to be outdone by Raj's announcement, is that we have snapshots for scratch orgs as well. So this means you can set up a snapshot, you can set up a scratch org, install dependent packages, the metadata, and any other dependent data that you need for your package creation use case, snapshot it, and then spin up other scratch orgs rapidly that look like that scratch org, that like that snapshot. This will help in CI, CD, and just for your developers to be more productive. Winter, winter nine, or spring 19 will bring more configuration capabilities, with also the ability to select versions so that as we get closer to a release version uh, for Salesforce, you can now target the next version of Salesforce and understand how your package is going to work uh, with the next Salesforce version. Beyond, we are looking at making scratch works emptier than they are today. We, we heard a lot of feedback that there are a bunch of user permissions that may be enabled in your scratch orgs today. And we are looking at completely removing all that cruft so that scratch orgs are truly, truly empty. For sandboxes, we had announced sandbox cloning a few releases ago. And we are moving towards getting a GA in the Spring 19 release. So we'll have another release of beta to test out your use cases and, and improve on our, on our bugs and then announce it in GA. We also have the Lightning Developer Pro pilot, uh, which will be focusing on quick cloning, and then later in subsequent releases, add the snapshots feature. Please send your nominations to Raj so he can accept you into, the, into this pilot. With sandboxes, we are also looking at ways to remove the, flexible, to remove the refresh interval, uh, or at least make it more flexible so that you're not tied to the five-day refresh interval for partial and the 29-day refresh interval for full sandboxes. We've heard feedback that there are several times when you have a project timeline that you need to refresh your sandbox for. And so we want to be mindful of that, and we want to build, up, build for that use case. There's also a feature that you requested to build developer sandboxes from a full sandbox. So cloning helped in a lot of ways, but this is what would make you truly productive, is what I've heard. And so that's on our roadmap as well. We have better routing services planned, uh, which, which will better distribute our, our environments and make them faster uh, to create. We also have source tracking that we want to enable in sandboxes. If you work with Scratchworks, you, uh, you, you understand the beauty of source pull and push commands, which 
track the delta every time you introduce changes into a scratch org. We want to bring the same capabilities into a sandbox. So a lot, of, lot was covered here today. And I want to quickly recap. First of all, package development, not just for ISVs. And scratch orgs are the means to use, are the means to develop packages. Scratch orgs provide the true isolated environment so that you can manage all the dependencies that you want in your package source. Finally, partial and full sandboxes are still just as useful for package development. This is because you want to test your packages in real-world data scenarios before you deploy it into your production org. As far as org development goes, it's still very valid. There should be no concerns there that it's one or the other. Some, some applications, you might use package development. Some applications, you'll stay with org development. The, what we've done is provide some of the tools that are on the package development side to the org development side to make it easier for you. Finally, org development uses chain sets and metadata API. And of course, the big announcement, last but not least, is the new developer sandbox, Lightning Dev Pro Sandbox. We'll give you your quick cloning and your sandbox snapshots. That's true innovation from us, and hopefully it'll help you be able to develop your apps faster with better quality. So we've had a, we talked about a few pilots. Um, if you are interested in those pilots, please talk to your AEs or your PAs, or come talk to Rowith and myself after we're done here. The feedback we get from you is so important into making our products what you need, so we'd love to have you be part of those pilots. And last but not least, the more you learn about the platform, the more powerful the platform will be for you. So here are some of the trial badges and trails that we recommend, especially related to this area. At this point, I don't have anything else to add. I don't know if Rohit does. If not, we will open it up for questions. Thank you. No question? So uh, on the beyond part of your roadmap, that you there was a shape API. Could you just briefly say what that is? Yeah, absolutely. So the question is shape API. Um, with the scratch work shape pilot, what we are helping you do right now is understand um, or help you create scratch orgs that look more like your production org with regards to the features and preferences that have been enabled in your production org over the last few years. With the Shape API, we want to expose what those features are so you can externalize that in the scratch definition file and version it along with the rest of your package source. With your org shape feature, will it work like uh, last year with uh, like referencing a template, or will we get the org shape uh, definition file? Yeah, so the pilot will be open uh, in winter 19. And as part of the uh, nomination process, we'll first be uh, enabling it for pilot participants from last year. Um, and if there's more room for more, we'll also enable for other customers. No, I mean, um, will the pilot let us, let us like download the definition file in JSON format or just reference an org? And yeah. So for Winter 19, you will uh, th there won't be a scratch definition file that's generated for you. That will come in subsequent releases. But for now, you will point to a production org and, and execute a command that will generate the shape of that production org and store it on Salesforce servers and then use it for creating other scratch orgs. You mentioned the config file that you can use for your scratch org to configure it the same way as your production org. Is there a trailhead or a demo or something on that? So the org shape API is what will help you create will help you create a scratch definition file that looks like your production org. It's not a feature that is in production yet, uh, so we don't have a trailhead module for it yet. Hey, thanks for a great presentation. Um, I've uh, been experimenting with scratch orgs in DX format. Can we abandon the MD API code format and just stay in the DX, uh, SFDX um, code format? Or do we always have to do this convert in order to deploy the sandboxes still? Yeah, great question. With the latest changes that we've announced as part of Winter 19, you don't have to keep converting between source format and metadata format while developing in a sandbox. You will still want to deploy it into your production org and into other sandboxes using the metadata deploy command. 
with the uh, unlocked packages, are you able to do destructive pushes as well? Or are you going to have to, like with the managed packages, anything like that, you have to, have to remove it and then reinstall a previous version? Yep. That's a great question. As part of Winter 19, uh, we have made it much easier for you to refactor unlocked packages. That means you can remove a piece of metadata from your package, create a new package version, and install it, and move that, package, uh, move that metadata into a different package. Uh, there are some pieces of metadata which will be hard deleted, um, such as Apex classes, ones that don't have a dependency on them. And then there are some pieces of metadata which will be uh, deprecated until uh, you move it to a different package. Uh, once you install it in, as part of a different package, the ownership will be automatically transferred over to the other package. All righty. Thank you very much, everyone. With that, we are at time, but Rohit and Raj will be more than happy to take further questions on the side. Uh, we just need to get ready for our next presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Dreamforce.